Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at every single one of the brand new LEGO Ninjago March 2024 minifigure selection. If you know me, I've been doing minifigure showcases for Ninjago, well, pretty much ever since Duck Bricks was a thing a couple of years ago, and this is no exception, because for March, we get a whole host of brand new Ninja Climber suits, a new look for Wildfire, and even a new hairpiece for Sora, as well as Lord Roz and all of his wolf mask minions. So join us as we have some fun and investigate the entire selection of March 2024 Ninjago minifigures and let me know what your favorites are in the comments below and what you think of those climber suits because I have a lot of thoughts. Okay, so here is the full selection of hero slash ninja based characters from the 2024 March wave. We're going to start off with just the heroes and move on to the villains in the second part of the video because frankly I feel like I have the most to say about these suits. The composition of the wave is rather interesting. As you can see it is very predominantly Kai focused. Whether intentionally or not, you are getting so many different versions of him including three copies of Climber Kai, one of which I have modified just to showcase what the armor is looking like with the hairpiece after you cut off a little bit. Yes, it's not purist but... Stay with me, I'm going to do an explanation later in the video, so I have modified one of them because we get so many. You also get this kind of hybrid Dragon's Rising version of Kai, which has the exact same suit as Season 1 last year, but with the dual molded hairpiece, which was introduced in the island. As for Nia, you get one Climber Nia, one Mech Pilot Nia, and one Dragon's Rising Season 1 Hybrid Nia, which is interesting how she has three different suits, but really only one new one. Lloyd only has three appearances as well, a Climber Lloyd, a Mech Pilot Lloyd, and the Sensei Lloyd, although the Climber one is the only one that's new. The other ones appeared in some way, shape, or form in the January wave, although the Sensei Lloyd was missing the armor pieces. Jay only appears in one set, in the Climber outfit, and who knows if that's even canon. Because if rumors are to be believed, he doesn't actually rejoin the team this soon, which is great because that means more cool character development, and might even be an antagonist in the Summer Wave, so we'll have to see, they might have just thrown that in to allow you to have all the different variations if you want them. Zane also has only one appearance in the Climber outfit, same as Cole, only one appearance in the Climber suit, Wildfire actually appears twice in a brand new suit with a new mold for the hair, as well as brand new printed torso and legs, Aaron appears twice in a suit that is literally identical with zero changes to his Dragon's Rising Season 1 counterpart, we get Euphrasia, the new Elemental Master of Wind for the first time as a minifigure, and Sora appears in a suit that is unchanged from her Dragon's Rising Season 1 appearance, but including brand new hair which is actually show accurate. Altogether, in terms of the new minifigures that we get, and counting Sora as a new minifigure, you get 6 of the ninja in climber outfits a 7th new minifigure for Wildfire, an 8th for Euphrasia, I would say 8.5 for Sora, and then 9.5 because Sensei Wu or Master Wu does have a new suit, although again, who knows if that will actually appear in the show or if it's just something they kind of came up with for the wave itself. Other than those minifigures, everything else has appeared in previous waves like the January wave in some configuration or the previous Dragon's Rising Season 1 wave last year. I'm going to start off by taking a look at the Climber suits because... I feel like those are the most important ones to cover and the ones that people are most interested in actually being able to see an up close and personal look at. We're going to swap out Kai for now for his standard appearance with the actual suit on like so and just really zoom in and take a look at what these minifigures have to offer. Now as a team, these look really, really good. Dare I say with the masks on, these may be the coolest ninja suits ever. Are they perfect? No. Some of them are better than others, and most of that is because they did not recolor the upper hood for the Dragon's Rising Season 1 hoods. So minifigures like Lloyd feel a little weird how he has a bright green top but a dark green bottom. Nia feels especially strange with the gunmetal gray and the azure. But then for other minifigures, it works pretty well. I feel like for Kai, the bright red actually does work because primarily the suit is highlighting a mix of dark red and bright red, and the mix is a little bit better than for some of the other suits. And for Cole, that one arguably looks one of the best because he actually just has the black coloration for the top and the bottom, so it's the most congruent. I've seen a lot of people complain online about the mismatch of colors and I think it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers a lot of other people. I am trying to be objective with the reviews and I do know a lot of people are bothered by the fact that these are different colors. 
But honestly, I feel like it kind of works for some of the ninja. Like for Jay here, the mix of dark blue, gold, and regular blue actually works quite well for me. And even for Zane, the white upper head does help balance out the color scheme, and I feel like if it was light gray, I probably would have liked the minifigure a little bit less. However, my biggest complaint with any of these suits, and it is a pretty major complaint, is that, tragically, they have for whatever reason decided to keep the same exact system as the Dragons Rising Season 1 suits, and while I say for whatever reason, I asked the designers this and they said it was because they wanted to make a system where they could just swap out different armor pieces but use the same top hoods for years to come and kind of make it a sustainable system of building up your own armor. So I understand it. Look, I get it. You're trying to make a system, but you can't turn the heads. And that is a major con to me, because here's the thing. These armor pieces are probably the coolest armor pieces that I would ever say, like, I think it's safe to say, these are the coolest armor suits the ninja have worn ever. Like, I think these dual molded components with a different dual molded color per ninja is insanely cool like that is awesome they almost feel like samurai armor they are incredibly detailed they look amazing the co-injected and dual molded color scheme just really makes all of these little gold details just barely fastened on the armor pop and then you take the suits you put them on you can't move the heads and it's tragic because I love taking photos of my minifigures in interesting places and I love being able to pose them in fun poses but you can't get them in a dynamic pose if you want Lloyd to look this way and all of a sudden the mask doesn't move with him and you can't put the mask on because it has to be facing straight. That is a huge disappointment to me and I feel like that is a major, major con to the way that these armor and mask pieces are set up and I really just wish, they imagine if they just had this, they cut off this piece and they just used a different ninja hood. Imagine they chopped it off and they just used the ninja hoods that we got for the mech pilots, you put them on there, and that way you could actually have it with the hair. Oh my goodness, it would have been perfect. It would have been perfect. Absolutely perfect. But they didn't do that, and that is very sad. Now, because I had so many Kais, I figured, well, why not just do a little choppy chop and see what he looks like with his hairpiece, his regular hairpiece, and the armor on. And come on, you have to, like, admit, this is so much better. This is just such an improvement over not being able to turn the heads and I hate, I hate how I have to cut Lego pieces to do it, especially cut pieces as beautiful as this, but it is a necessary evil because if I want to have these characters in fun poses and in good poses, I'm almost always going to show them the way that we see them in the show, which is with the masks off and with their heads turned and in a dynamic pose. And even if you want the mask on, at least then just use a separate piece for the mask it would need to be cut down further like this whole piece would need to be cut down but they could have made it work with these they totally could have made it work and i don't know why they chose not to do that i mean i do because they want to make a system but it is very disappointing to me because this feels just a million times more dynamic than what we're getting now because now you can get this in really heroic poses. They can be looking off to the side. That armor just looks so good on the characters and it's a major missed opportunity for me that they chose to cut this off. I don't know, like I've seen people complain more about the color scheme than about this and I feel like this is the biggest complaint for me but maybe that's just me and again, feel free to comment down below if you agree or disagree with my thoughts because it's honestly been something that's been bugging me since Dragons Rising Season 1 and they did it again for these beautiful armor pieces. Like, at least with these armor pieces, I was like, eh, they're okay. You know, they're not the most exciting pieces, so it's whatever. But for these, they're so good. They're dual molded. They look amazing. They're the coolest armor pieces the ninja have ever gotten. And you can't turn their heads with them. Otherwise, though, they do look really nice. I especially like how useful some of these armor pieces will be outside of Ninjago. Like this gunmetal gray one is going to be perfect for a Shogun inspired or Japanese samurai inspired type of outfit. And all the minifigures just look so cool with these armor pieces. These are amazing. Like the dark blue and gold, absolute winner. Dark green and gold, another great color scheme. I think Zane should have been silver and not light gray. I will stand by that. I feel like these should have been silver instead of light gray, but otherwise, it's really good. It's a really good color scheme, but I just cannot get around the very weird fact that 
he cannot turn their heads, and that is very sad and disappointing to me. It is what it is. And look, it's not a deal breaker, it's not the end of the world, I just really wish that they were able to pose these up a lot better because I feel like these suits deserve to be showcased and loved. Now that being said, the suits are really great, I do like the climbing gear factored on the suits themselves. Obviously they are highly specialized suits, especially compared to what we normally get for Ninjago, but I do like the specialization because they are having this kind of adventure in climbing through the wildness, so it definitely does make sense to be factored in that way. And overall, these are easily, I can't complain about the armor pieces. Getting six new dual molded armor pieces is unprecedented in any other theme. Like, imagine if LEGO Star Wars got six new dual molded pieces, people would be losing their minds. But for Ninjago, it's just, just another day in Ninjago, you know? It's just like, oh yeah, we casually got six brand new, amazingly beautiful dual molded armor pieces. So I can't complain too much because they are so cool. And I love the way they look, and I hope that LEGO will do some armor pieces like this in the future, just not with the mask built in because they can't turn the heads. Moving on from the climbing ninja though, I do want to highlight some of the other characters. Wildfire here appears in a brand new outfit and this is a really nice outfit to get. I love the usage of the adult or teen Groot armor element. They, they used this before, this was like from the um, Lego Movie 2 and I think they used it even way before that as well from, was it Prince of Persia or something like that? So this armor piece has been around for a while, but I think it works really well as this kind of more unique and more kind of rural and archaic armor piece for Wildfire where it almost feels like it's hashed together full of scrap material. The new hair piece is great, although I do wish that we would get an alternate expression for the character. Having one that's smiling or maybe laughing and Glee as she's destroying things would have been really nice to get for this character, but I think it's okay, especially because they probably didn't have the budget to do that and they're just using the older head, but it's nice we're getting a brand new minifigure for her and that new hairpiece just works out really well. I feel like it is the natural progression of the initial hairpiece she had, which was the Changa hairpiece from Monkey Kid, but just looks a lot better in terms of making it feel like she has her own character, which I do really appreciate. Moving onwards, we have another version of her with the flames, and that is a really nice variation of the character. I do like how you have these fire elements that you can use to shoot out of the hands, and it's just overall a really nice one to get. Moving on from that, we have Euphrasia here. Now, Euphrasia does have a hairpiece as well. I do really appreciate how she is kind of African-American coded, um, or maybe just African coded, especially in the way that they've done the facial expression. Obviously, in Ninjago, all minifigures have yellow skin, who are humans for the most part, but they just decided to depict different races by just kind of hinting at it through the expressions. Aaron is obviously coded to be, uh, of, I guess, a darker skin color, including with the hair that he has. Like, it's clearly meant to be that sort of character, which I do really appreciate the diversity included in these minifigures. Unfortunately, though, the head they used is just a generic city head, and... I don't know if it necessarily fits Euphrasia that well. I feel like a more focused or combat ready head would have been great, but it's not that bad and I do like the design of the robes. Would have been cool to get these as dual molded legs. I think that would have added a lot to the character, but all in all, it is a fun minifigure to have. And I do like the weapon. It feels very befitting of a master of wind. A lot of people did complain about the minifigure when it was first revealed, saying it doesn't really look like the character in the show. And with the hood on, I feel like a lot of people's problems will be assuaged because the hood just really ties the character together. Moving onwards, the other new minifigure we have is Master Wu here, and to be honest, this minifigure doesn't really excite me that much. It's just another variation of Wu in the dark tan and light tan coloration, which is just alright to me. It's just okay. I mean, I feel like I would have preferred getting a very interesting like spirit Wu minifigure like maybe making some of his limbs transparent or his head transparent and giving him a golden beard because he appears as a spirit in the show I think that would have been really cool but I guess they just decided to go with more of a standard variation of the character and I understand why but I always liked the season 11 and secrets of the forbidden spinjitsu master Wu headpiece which had the sideburns and he does have the sideburns in the trailer that literally came out at the time of recording this today although this video will probably come out a few days later but they are using just the older ninjago legacy headpiece which doesn't have the very cool sideburns and the knot at the back of the head which really set him apart so this is just kind of a kind of boring Wu variant to be honest it's not the most exciting thing to me. Master Lloyd, on the other hand, is really cool, and I love how we are getting a dedicated Master Lloyd 
The only major complaint I have with the minifigure is I feel like it was meant for him to have a cape. You can see that he literally has the chain connecting what would be like a dark tan or a dark orange cape on the back, but he just doesn't have one and instead he's just using the Lego uh, Sons of Garmadon and Monkey Kid armor piece, which is a good addition to the character. It does set him apart from the initial version that came in the Jay's Mech Battle Pack earlier this year, but it just feels like this minifigure is literally begging for a cape. He feels like he was designed to have a cape. Who knows that maybe like in the summer wave he might have a cape, but I just feel like it was a missed opportunity not to give him one, especially because he comes in the very expensive Dragonstone Shrine. And moving onwards from that, there are just a lot of repeat minifigures from January, so I won't dwell on those for this video. You've got Mech Suit Nia right here, again another repeat. Mech Suit Lloyd, another repeat of minifigures that we got. I do like these new hoods because you can actually move the heads around them. You have these weird hybrid versions of Season 1 Kai and Nia, which are using identical outfits of their Season 1 counterparts, but just the dual molded hair that we got in Seabound for Nia and The Island for Kai, so... Nothing that interesting going on with these characters, and probably the most disappointing is Eren, because Eren is literally unchanged except for his accessory, which is the new ninja hook. He is unchanged from his season 1 appearance, and you get two of him. Same with baby Ryu, but that's fine, because Ryu's Ryu, and Ryu doesn't really change unless he grows up. Final good guy minifigure is Sora here, who is also unchanged from the initial counterpart from Season 1, but is sporting a brand new, very accurate hairpiece, dual molded in dark blue and coral, which I love. I love that we got this as a hairpiece. It is so great to finally get her hair. We don't have to wait literally years to get it, which I was very worried about. And a lot of people did complain initially when the piece was revealed that they messed up her front bangs, that they don't look quite right. And I have to say, in person, I actually really like it. I feel like it fits the character very well, and I don't really have that many complaints, so it is what it is. I just don't really see the complaints. I feel like it is very accurate to the show, and I do like how she looks with the hairpiece on. But that about sums up the minifigure selection of this particular lineup. Would I have appreciated it if maybe they had one less Kai and one more of the copies of the other Climbing Ninja, like at least give us another Climber Lloyd or like another Climber Nia, but three Climber Kais is a lot. But I do get that Kai is maybe one of the focus points of the season, we'll have to wait and see, but we do get three Kais, we get three Nias in different outfits, we get three different Lloyds in different outfits, two identical errands, Minifigure composition, what I'm saying is it could be better, and I hope this isn't the only time we see the Climber suits because so much budget and effort went into making these highly detailed pieces of armor, but they've already revealed new suits for the ninja this summer in the tournament arc. They're doing tournament again, which I'm very curious to see how that will play into things. So maybe these might be the only sets that we ever get the climber ninja in, and that would be a shame, because these armor pieces are almost too cool to keep to only these minifigures. That's all for the heroes though, and now it's time to look at the villains. Here's the selection of villain minifigures from this year's March wave, and unfortunately all of these did already appear in the January wave, so honestly, there's not much I have to say about these that's any different than what I already said in the January wave. Just go and watch the video where I showcased all of the January minifigures if you want an up-close look at these particular figures. However, there is one very interesting new accessory that they have introduced for March, and that is this blood sword right here. Easily one of my favorite new sword elements, this is an absolutely beautiful dual molded element that has transparent red factored into the design with gunmetal gray. It almost feels like the logo in it is a blood droplet to kind of signify the blood moon and it's just such a cool piece. I love the design of the sword, you even have a transparent red bottom tip which is really really cool and overall definitely one of my favorite new villain swords that we've gotten in a long time. One of the ends of it is more scratched up and beat up and has some of these line markings on the side, the other one is a little bit more smooth on this side and I feel like it just adds a lot in the complexity of the piece itself. It makes it feel more like a battle hardened element and this is just so cool. Very glad it's actually appearing in the show, we've already seen it in the trailers, so it looks very, very cool, and I have basically no complaints about this new sword piece, it's really awesome. I will, however, talk about the composition of the minifigures themselves, because I feel like this is a pretty interesting lineup of characters. You have two copies of Lord Roz, two copies of Jordana, three copies of Cinder, which is good because Cinder looks awesome and he looks like such a menacing villain, four copies of the Wolf Mask Warriors, and one copy with the Hooded. And 
I feel like the selection is okay. I probably could have gone with like one less Cinder and one more generic Wolf Mask Warrior just to be able to army build these a lot more. But listen, I get it. I totally understand they want to push the kind of new named characters and Cinder is shaping up to be a major new antagonist who looks amazing in fight scenes, may I add. So I do understand that's kind of why they decided to include him in a lot more sets. He's even getting more focus in Raz at this point, which is pretty funny. But I do appreciate their attempt to actually make some of the minifigures feel like they stand out. Like this version of Jordana has a jetpack and flying suit so she can take to the skies. It's a very simple flying suit, but... It's just something that feels a little bit different and a little more unique compared to some of the other characters for the minifigures just feeling very generic and repeated. And what I will say is that these minifigures are some of the coolest army building minifigures we have gotten from Ninjago in a long time. The heads underneath are really menacing. I love this kind of lit up blue aesthetic they have. Maybe when they're channeling Shatterspin, the other side of the head also looks really cool. Very useful for like Japanese Shogun or Samurai inspired builds. So that is going to be awesome. And overall, big fan of the way that they were able to pull these off. Just uh, nothing super interesting because this doesn't introduce any new characters whatsoever. Cinder remains to be one of the coolest new villain designs they've come up with, with a fully transparent black head using the new transparent black color they introduced last year, so that is very, very cool to see. Super happy to get him, and Lord Roz is consistently good. I just wish he had arm printing. I was actually shown a version of him that had arm printing that was... I believe supposed to appear in the March wave, so I don't really know what happened with that. I feel like the arm printing really tied the character together, where you really have a very interesting look with the pink stripes on the arm, and it's a bit disappointing to see that not being used for this version of the character, but hopefully in the summer, maybe they'll rectify that and we will get an Avraz with arm printing, and my fingers are certainly crossed because that would be very, very cool. Overall, though, I don't really have that much to say about the characters because, again, these are all repeats from the previous January wave. I already talked about these at length for my January minifigure mega review video, so again, check that out if you want. And overall, just really happy with the new sword piece. We do get four of the new sword elements if you get all of the sets, which is a pretty nice selection, although now I wish that every single one of the minifigures was armed with these swords because they're really, really cool. That's pretty much it for this minifigure showcase video. I'm glad we got a chance to look at both the villains and the heroes all in one pretty holistic view. Pretty mixed on the suits this time. The climber suits are amazing, but they're almost too good. Such that since you can't turn the heads, I am now much more unhappy with the suits than I would be if the armor was just like okay. And then you couldn't turn the heads, but then I would be like, oh, whatever. I don't really care that much because the suits aren't that good anyway. Because the suits are really good. So now I want to take photos of them, I want to play with them, I want to turn the heads, and I cannot. So that is very sad. It is what it is. And hopefully LEGO, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who cares. Like, I'm so curious in comments, like, do people actually care or am I really the only one making such a big fuss out of this? So do let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the head versus not head turning debacle. And I'm very curious to hear what people have to say. And overall, for a March wave that only has seven sets, I mean, I guess seven is a lot, but for a March wave that has seven individual sets, this is a very good selection of minifigures. I like that they all have different diverse things with them. They bring something new to the table. Clearly so much budget went into the minifigures of season two because we have a great selection of new dual molded pieces. I count like seven new dual molded pieces because you got the sword and the six armors. You also have a new hair piece, so that's eight dual molded pieces. Plus you get all the new prints, the new weapons, which are really good, the new, all just the wolf masks and Roz himself and Cinder getting the trans black head. It's just a lot of really great stuff. And if this is just the start of Ninjago 2024, I am so excited to see what the future brings. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed our minifigure roundup. I had to do it. Here's Sensei or Master Lloyd with the Season 11 Woo Cape and the more serious face that he got for the other Dragons Rising sets, and yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I'm cooking with this one. I love the way the cape looks. Lego, please bring back that cape piece and use it on Lloyd because this, this is perfection right here. Great way to end the video. I hope you enjoyed. All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at all of the brand new March 2024 Lego Ninjago minifigures. Let me know in the comments which are your favorites, which are your least favorites. What do you think of those controversial new Ninja Climber suits? Thank you so much for watching. 
Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. Bye for now.